Hey everybody, Floyd here. Welcome back to the channel. I was talking about showing you everything that I'm doing on my project bikes. This is the SR500. It really does need a lot more work than the interceptor, even though it doesn't look like it. But today we're going to remove and rebuild the front brake master cylinders. First, start by taking the rubber boot loose and pulling all of this back. I'm planning to change out the handlebar grip, so I'm taking this all the way off. The handlebar lever, I mean. Okay. The next thing you do is this is the brake light switch. There's a small hole up at the bottom here with a catch. You want to push in on that little catch, which is right here, and that lets this slide out. I'm going to do a couple of extra steps here that you don't necessarily have to do. But since I am planning to change this lever, I'm going to go ahead and loosen the bolts that hold it. That way it's just a lot easier to deal with. I had already taken the top off and drained out the brake fluid. Top is lying on the table here beside me. It helps to have a good clean workspace. Clean off at least one flat surface somewhere to have enough room to lay everything out. Now we will take this off. Remove the brake cables, brake hoses, brake hoses. These are cables over here on the clutch and the bottom. This is a brake line or a brake hose. I had previously installed some braided brake lines, but the master cylinder will not pump up. So I'm going to have to fix it as well. Go ahead and switch over to my ratchet. Make sure it's going in the right direction. Anyhow, that in a nutshell is how you remove the master cylinder. So we will be right back. I'll have everything organized on the table and show you how we re repair it. One thing I wanted to point out to you on this Yamaha that you may or may not see on some motorcycles is this return spring. For the lever which goes into this little hole right here go grab a tool right quick and that I had thought I had assembled everything but it turns out that I have okay first thing we want to do here is to get this rubber boot that is over the end of the plunger out. I have a new one, so it's not a huge deal if I tear this one up, but I still... Oh well, I cut out a lot of needless fiddling here. But right down inside of this hole here, 
there is a small circlip. So I was able to hook the circlip and pull it out of there. Pull out that washer. Now that circlip, it turns out, was only holding that one spacer here in place. And inside of that, there is a normal circlip. Well, once again, I got a bit fiddly. I thought I was going to have to cut my snap ring pliers down to reach, but I was able to rotate the snap ring around to where I could reach it in this gap and pull it loose. And now here it comes out. So now let's see what happens when we push out on this piston. There we go, and it slides right out. There's the spring and the plunger. As you can see, it's all quite crusty. There's a lot of dirt and debris in here. Everything is covered up. I have all new rubber parts and even a new piston in the kit. So I'm going to pause this video for a little bit while I go clean this part up. I'm going to clean it and then I'm going to repaint some of the chips and stuff on it. And then I'll come back and show you how to reassemble. Okay, and we're back here now. We've got the master cylinder cleaned up. We've got all the parts laid out. Got some brake fluid, some clean brake fluid to use to lubricate the stuff as I put it in the, uh, all the rubber parts as I put them in the master cylinder. One thing to watch out for that caught me off guard on these old Yamahas, they use DOT 3 brake fluid instead of DOT 4 like the Hondas of the same era. So watch out for that if you're a Honda guy like I've always been. So we need to lubricate these rubber parts. If you look at this rubber plunger here and you'll look at the old one, you'll see how it's oriented on the old one. Make sure you change it and put it the same way. Get the dirt off my fingers. You don't want to get any of this dirt in your new parts. Had to stretch it over. And then slide it down just like that. That's how it should fit. Go ahead and lubricate the spring cup as well. I gave the master cylinder body a quick coat of PJ1 Fast Black and then set it on top of the shop heater for a while to cure. So come down through here. Set the spring in. Make sure we get this cup oriented the right way. Okay, the next part. Once you have the cup oriented the right way, because the cup will go over the top of the spring, as you can see on this, as you can see on this old one. That is how that cup fits. So 
Oh, well, let me make a mess here, why don't I? Okay. The washer goes back over the piston. Trying to be a little careful. The paint's still a little bit sticky, even though it's been drying for over... And I worry it is January after all. It is cold. Okay, that is going in correctly. Now comes the fun part. Got this in there with the snap ring pliers. I'll take a screwdriver and go around and make sure that it's all seated well. Because you certainly don't want it coming back out on you. That is how all of that goes in. Okay, the rubber sleeve is on. I've got the uh, plastic washer back in there, and it's time to put the circlet down. Once again, that was a little bit fiddly, and you may not tell from here, but I finally got the circlip snapped in this place. So it is retaining the rubber boot. So the rest of it is just a matter of putting it back together. There you see, I've got a new... lever here even though I didn't actually need it. The old one is chipped up a little bit. Kind of broke up on the end here. And I'm trying to make this one look nice. I just discovered that I have to walk over it to the toolbox and get a flathead screwdriver. But that's okay. We're going on from here. Uh, 
Okay, I'm back over here. Just putting my new lever together and getting it ready to install. Make sure you get the spring in that little notch here. I really like these screwdrivers. I recommend using a hollow ground screwdriver like this for almost anything. And of course, you notice this is an insulated electrician screwdriver. I got it years ago when I was working as an electromechanical maintenance technician in a paper products company. So we have that adjusted up just right. Tighten down the lock nut a little bit. I'm not going to put any fluid in it yet. I'm just going to throw it back together. I'm not putting it. I'm not going to bleed the brakes. This time I'm just going to reinstall it. I'm just playing with my motorcycles a little bit. Unless it's too cold to ride one. So anyhow, let's go ahead and put this back on now. Okay, let's go ahead and get this reinstalled. I want to go ahead and show you this brake light switch. As you can see, it's got a little flat on it. It's also got two little catches right here. And they will fit. One of them goes in that hole in the bottom and holds it in place. So you will just put that in. like so and that locks your brake light in place put the cap on make sure you pay attention to the up arrow What I like to do for my initial setup is set up. so that the top of the brake mast cylinder is level. That makes it easier while you're bleeding the brakes and filling it up with fluid. And then after you get all that done and you're finished with it, then you put it where the lever feels most comfortable for you.
that concludes today's video. I'm not going to fill this up and bleed the brakes yet because I still have to take the front caliper off and overhaul it as well. So I'll show you how to do that on the next video. Take care. Like and subscribe. Keep watching. There's more to come.